Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we are back. As usual, time flies when you're having fun on the first segment, but you know we're going to keep on going because we have yeah, some great guests. We've got four up today. That's we have awesome. four That's incredible awesome. guests. We have the the NRG's top 20 under 40, four great individuals, and we're coming up with our second one right now. And Jennifer Wahop from Gary Green Good out morning. in the Burbs, what are you talking about? Yes, Welcome. out in the Burbs. There is life outside the loop. <laughs> there, there is. I agree. <laughs> so let's talk. You know, again, I always like to ask, how would you get in real estate? What were you thinking? Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know what I was thinking. You, were, you think pretty normal. I got into real estate about four years ago. Market was down. I was eight months pregnant. I just moved to Houston, didn't know anybody, and I thought, I'll get my real estate the license. The default <laughs> career, yeah. like we talked about. Exactly. I can always sell real estate, right? Uh, it's I can easy. meet people that way. Uh, and it's easy. There you go. Oh, yeah, easy money. That's what I thought. No, yeah. no not true, but um, I'm glad I did it when I did it because it's worked out really well. You know, actually, you know, getting into the business when it's slow is probably not a bad idea mm-hmm. because it, we're in what I would consider, and economists have called it a hyper market. Oh, yeah. And out in Katy especially because uh, right now we're finally up to about 2.9 months supply of homes if, for HAR. Uh, but we were hovering at about 18 months at 2.6. But yeah. Katy's always been even less than that. Yeah, I think it's, we're about 2.1 right now. 2.1, mm-hmm. which means if you don't list another home in 2.1 months, mm-hmm. you're out of business. Exactly. So tell me, tell me about your clients. Um, I get a lot of clients who started off Interloop when they were young, just got married. They have kids. And they want more house, and they can't necessarily afford to have that much house inside the loop. So they decide to make the move out to the suburbs. Yeah, and you're in the La Terra location for mm-hmm. Gary Green. And so do people specifically come out there, you think, for the school system? That's exactly what we see. People come for the schools, and they come because they can get a lot more house for their money. So they want yards. They want playrooms. You know, they want a media room, things like that, things that are harder to find the closer in you come. So a lot of stay-at-home moms. They're fine with making their husbands commute every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be home with the kids, dear. Yeah, Don't exactly. worry about it. I'll stay here and hold it down. And they want to stay home in a nice house during the day. So we see, we're see we seeing enormous growth right now. You know, and, and this is what I talked about. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, I obviously live out in that area. And, and one of the things that we've seen, if you look at, you know, you mentioned four years ago. If you look at what's happened even over the past mm-hmm. three years. Yeah. You know, not only what they're doing with La Santera, but if you go out more west towards Fulcher, talk a little bit about all the, that growth. Because everyone just listens about Cinco Ranch. That's the big thing. Everyone's yeah. Cinco, Cinco, Cinco. There's a lot of other stuff there out is. there. And Cinco's I don't know why that done. sounded it's, funny to me. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They Cinco, just Cinco, the, Cinco. The, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Toro, Toro, Toro. Like there right? should be some yeah. music that went along with that, um, you know? Because they're finishing their last <laughs> section of land that was just the they stuff are. that's west of 99. They're yeah. finishing that up. And, and we have a lot of new developers coming in who have seen the growth, especially with Grand Parkway getting open now. Right. All of that land's being developed, uh, and I'm sh- a lot of people are talking this week about the article that came out in the Chronicle predicting Katy will be bigger than the city of Pittsburgh in the next two years. Oh my! So it's not slowing down. Well, and, and I can definitely see it. I mean, you you obviously are out there. You know, one of the things you know it's, it's funny is you've got Cross Creek Ranch. If you go out towards Folster, you've got Churchill Farms. You have obviously uh, Firethorn. You have so much, and it's still going west. Mm-hmm. There is still a whole bunch of development that's going on right there. And, and what most people don't realize is nowadays, and you probably realize the same thing, used to be four years ago, if you want to do certain things, you, you had to come in town. Right. Now you can do everything out there. It really is a bubble. It's turning it more and more. To the, people commute for work, but other than that, they are staying in Katy to go out to eat on the weekends, to do things with their kids. Well, I remember that I grew up in Columbus, and uh, yeah, you you grew up, you grew up. Ohio. <laughs> well, good point. <laughs> I lived in Columbus <laughs> in the early stages of my life. Um, I moved here in '85, and for a while I, I did a lot of commuting back and forth uh, as we transitioned moving here. Um, and it was a distinct, long, you know, travel distance between Columbus to Sealy, and from Sealy to Katy, and then from Katy into Houston, and then from Houston out to Humble. Now it's almost completely indistinct. You yeah. you can oh, yeah. you move from North Houston all the way out to past Katy. And it's just one big city. Exactly. It, it uh-huh. never stops. It's There's a light that never stops. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. So, and, and the primary, the, the, the type of business that you're dealing with is mm-hmm. oil and gas for, for you, isn't it? We're getting a, we get a lot of relocation. We live yeah. in one of the most popular zip codes for relocation here in Houston. Um, and I can certainly relate to my clients because that's, that's how I ended up here. We moved here for my husband's job. We had kids. You know, where's good schools? Where's the best place for us to be? And that's, that's why we ended up there. And so we are getting more and more. We're close to the energy corridor. 
affordable housing and just like I said, growth is. And of course, you get people from California. That's just chump change for them. Exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I've got change left over from my. It's like going to they McDonald's. They are thrilled with what they can get here. Yeah, they take their equity dollars. They can actually. Pay, that's why you get, you're getting cash offers a lot. Oh, now. a lot. Yeah, a, a lot of that because they sold their house in California, move out here, and you know they probably got five six hundred thousand dollars in cash from their house, mm-hmm. and they get they can buy. Pretty nice house for five, exactly, six hundred thousand yeah. dollars in that area. As long area. as they have a pool and some palm trees, they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's pretty funny also is you know on the international side, a lot of international clients obviously are coming out of that area. It's it's neat in Houston though because Katie and within the Latin American community, we call it Katie Suela because Venezuelans <laughs> are extremely popular. It's mm-hmm. an extremely popular area. Yeah. Uh, Woodlands, we call it Little Mexico because of how many Mexican nationals yeah. are now moving out there. So it's interesting to see also how these population migrations sort of take place. And at the same time, you see certain areas, even regional areas within, you know, Latin America or whether it be Asia, et cetera, we all tend to populate certain areas pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a trend. And I love to see the international people come in because it really, you know, we are the most diversified city in the country. If you go to Fort Bend County, they are touted as being the most cult- culturally diverse uh, county in the U.S. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, and I coach our new agents as well in our office. We're getting a lot of international people that are now getting into real estate, too, which, which is, is great. Yeah. But, uh, Chris, you know, Chris is totally bilingual. In fact, English is his second language. <laughs> and so um, it's... it's uh, Texan being my first. Yeah, Texan being... No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, anyway, the, uh, we, f- we find that people who are uh, doing business, even though they may speak perfect English. Mm-hmm. They love to do business in their own language. Oh, sure. And so I'm trilingual. I try to speak other languages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk briefly about the, the 20 under 40 award. Because, uh, you know, that's a pretty big honor because you have to, to meet certain qualifications. Talk about those qualifications. Thank well, she you. just turned 20. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I had 20 more years to get it, but fortunately I got in. No, it's a, it's a huge honor. We're all very excited to have received it. Um, they look at not just your sales, but they want to see, you know, involvement. Are you involved in the community? Are you a leader within the association? Things like that. So they want agents that produce, but isn't just about the top producing agents in Houston. It's who they really feel are going to be the next leaders in, in our real estate community. Yeah, they do, I know they look at a lot of different things. When they, the, the award's been out there for about five years. When we first started, you know, it, there was you know a modicum of requirements, but now it's tough because there's I don't know how many candidates vie for this award, but it's a lot now. It's getting more and more every year. Every yeah. year is more time, uh-huh. and of course. Uh-huh. It, 80, 80, applicants, yeah. 80 sure. applicants. Well, I, I yeah. you know, we have a very uh, active social media crowd, and mm-hmm. there's lots of commenting going on on Facebook. So I really like that there's a lot of uh, a real estate conversation happening around this because uh, Brad Reed wants you to sing some Britney. No. <laughs> 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 Hit me, baby, one, one more time. Let me finish my mimosa. I mean orange juice. I mean orange juice. And then she'll be on top of the car. We won't be able to get her down. <laughs> but if, you know, I David met, can dance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> this show really should go on TV. You know. Yes. Um, but I had actually met you through Christy Borden the first time, yeah. and, and I knew right away that you were going to be up and coming star. You had that great amount of confidence about you, and you know, you had you you weren't shy. You weren't retiring. You're just like, <laughs> put you put your hand out there, firm handshake, and it's like. This woman's going to Well, places. Christy's a good mentor to have. Oh, she's a yeah. <laughs> great and mentor And she's, to and she's have. A, yeah. a Rat Pack alumni. She's been I on did, the show. I've heard that before. Yes, yeah, she, yeah. and she did an Austin job. She came in and talked about tree pack and things like that. So, I um, agree. She hates to talk. I'm sure you had to, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> sure you had to pull it out of her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. You know, some, some guests, all you had to do is to ask them one question, and, and then you can sit back. There's your You segment. know, go, go another <laughs> cup of coffee. And, right. But, but uh, you know, Christy is an awesome realtor, and, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of hers. And, right. so, and, and if she's your mentor, just... Do what she does. I just try to be. I just try to be like her. That's just I do. just be, do what she does, and you'll be a major success. So, uh, let, talk about uh, lifestyles. Mm-hmm. When people are coming in, and, and if they're in your like your same age group, mm-hmm. what what are the specific things they look for in buying a home? Um, like you said, lifestyle. You know, they want to be close to parks. Schools are obviously very important. Uh, Katie's very kid friendly, family friendly, restaurants, things like that. Um, so they're looking at you know where they can be that they're going to be close to things like that for their kids to do youth sports, um, things like that. They're really looking at a place where they there's a lot of moms, there's a lot of kids where they can really see themselves fitting in. Well, I always notice that all those kids out there have so many activities. That being a mom is a full time job because they're driving the kids to soccer practice, they're driving them to this thing, karate. I remember and all that stuff when I was a kid. And, yeah. 
You know, it's yeah. just, it, you know, I had Cub Scouts. Yeah, uh, that was <laughs> that, that was kind of it. And that there's you Cub Scouts okay. are still around, yeah. by the way. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, now that, uh, how, you know, you're getting a lot of business now. How do you, you know, there's people out there who get in real estate that don't do as well as you. Mm-hmm. What, What's different about you? She answers the phone. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> return your calls. <laughs> we talked about that earlier. Return phone calls. Answer your phone. Um, really, people get into this business and they think it's easier than it is. You really have to have a strong work e- work ethic. You know, you, you, you mean it's day. really a business? <laughs> yeah, it, it actually is your own small business. You know, and uh, it's it's going to be in the beginning, seven days a week, and you're going to grind it out, and you may not see a lot of return right at first. So I always tell people to stick it out. You know, yeah, well, you know, and the fact that you got into it in a, in a market that was a slower mm-hmm. point of the market right there, I always tell everybody, I, I think it's great because as you, as, as you probably know and, and you experience this is you end up learning in a way that is very, uh, very efficient. You learn a lot of the nuances associated with it. So when it becomes this hyper market, you had a lot of those, those experiences associated with the downtime, a lot of the financial frustration, a lot of the marketing frustration. So then all of a sudden everything sort of becomes second nature yeah. to you. Yeah. And it's always good to know what a down market looks like because right now people come in there new and going, oh, it must be like this all the time. Yeah. Right. You know, I've already got transactions going on. And I've been in the business Settle two in, weeks. settle in. <laughs> and, yep. and, and it's, it's, it's not that way. It's, it is a cyclical business. And it, yes. you know, it'd be hyper for a while. I think we've still got two more years. What well, do you think on that? I think so. I think you're right. I think we have a couple more years before it starts to slow down. But um, I agree. I was happy to come in when it was slow, learn what I was doing, figure it out, get some referrals, get some clients, and, and it's worked out well. And I think it's a great way to come in. It's it pretty bold, though, because a lot of people were exiting at that time. I think HR's numbers right. were down to about 23,000. We're back up to about 27,000 now, and we're getting new people in classes all the time mm-hmm. now, which is encouraging. And some, you know, by attrition, by natural attrition, we'll lose some of those, but because it isn't easy. Yeah. One can exactly. hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we've had conversations about this, 27,000 realtors, and, and yes. uh, you know, it really is the like the 80-20 rule. Yeah, uh, basically. Yep. And, and, and I, th- I think if you go to any office, 80. it's going to be the 80-20 rule. Mm-hmm. But 20% of the people will be doing 80% of the business. Well, you know, we are going to be coming up against a break no! again right now. Jennifer, how can we reach you, if you don't mind? Uh, you can visit my website. It is www.katygoodlife.com, or my email is jennifer at katygoodlife.com. Katie Good Life. I love that because it is a good, good life. life. Uh, yes. Come live the good life out in Katie. I agree right there. Well, we are coming up against a break right now, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. And the whole lot of you had a dash of starlight and a dozen roses, too. Then let it rise for a hundred years or two. And that's the recipe for making love. It doesn't need sugar, cause it's already sweet. It doesn't need an oven, cause it's got a lot of heat. Just add a dash of kisses to make it all complete. And that's the recipe for making love. 